What's up guys, I'm Dale from Creator Pro website and in today's video I'm going to walk you through a complete step-by-step -step WooCommerce tutorial. WooCommerce is an awesome free plugin for WordPress that allows you to create a professional e-commerce store. You can create products, run sales, manage your inventory, create custom coupon codes, customize your cart and checkout pages, and more. So here's an overview of everything that I'll be covering in this video. I'll show you how to get your own domain name and web hosting, which is what you'll need in order to launch your online store. I'll show you how to install WordPress, which is an awesome free website builder, and how to start with a pre-built store, which can be easily edited using drag and drop. We'll also install WooCommerce, which will allow you to create and sell your products like a professional on your website. And we'll create six different products. The first product is a simple product. It's just one item that can be purchased as is. Next, we'll create a variable product, meaning a product with different variations, such as size and color. We'll do a digital product, which can be something like a two-hour Zoom coaching session with me. We'll also do a digital downloadable product, such as an ebook that can be downloaded immediately. And we'll do an affiliate product, which is basically promoting other people's products, and then you can make a commission sale through that. And we'll also do a grouped product, which can be a product that will have several different products built in to make it one group. For your products, I'll walk you through setting price and sales prices, setting your inventory, doing categories, creating tags for your products, uploading product images, and more. After that, we'll configure our shop page, such as creating a logo and a site icon for your shop, setting up your home page to display certain products. I'll also show you how to change text, backgrounds, buttons, and more so that you can customize your home page just how you like. I'll show you how to create a filter by price widget so that customers can sort through your products within their budget as well as how to create a menu at the top of your website with different product categories. And when someone adds something to their cart, they'll have this awesome cart summary here at the bottom with the subtotal, as well as a cart summary whenever you hover over the cart button. And if we view our cart, you'll have this really clean overview of all the products in your cart, and you can change the amounts of each product that you want. I'll also show you how to set up shipping methods and custom shipping prices for each shipping zone, I'll also show you how to set up coupon codes. So you can see if I put in this coupon code, it gives me 20% off my total. And I'll also show you how to create one for a certain amount of dollars off the total, as well as a free shipping coupon. And then we'll set up your payment methods. People can go to the checkout page and use a credit card or PayPal so that that money can be added to your bank account. I'll also show you how to manage your new product orders so that you can keep the customer updated with email confirmations about the status of their order. So to get started with creating an online store with WooCommerce, I'll first have to walk you through step-by-step -step getting a domain name and web hosting, which I have a huge discount for for all my viewers here at Create a Pro website. We'll also be installing WordPress, importing a template website, and installing WooCommerce. There's also a link in the description where you can download all of the follow along images that I use for the products and the store, which I highly recommend. And if at any point you need to go back to a section or skip ahead to a section of this video, you can find timestamps in the description. Just simply click on one and it will take you there. You can also use the right and left arrow keys on your keyboard to go forward or backward by five seconds if needed. And you can change the play speed of this video if you feel like I'm moving too fast or too slow by clicking on the gear icon and selecting playback speed. And after this video, if you find it helpful, then please feel free to like this video or subscribe for more. Every little like and comment or subscribe really helps my channel grow so that I can put out more tutorials like this. All right, so if you're ready, let's get started. Step number one is to get a domain name and web hosting. To do this, just click on the very first link in the description or you can go over to createaprowebsite.com slash hosting. And then this will take you to a special co-branded landing page that I have with hostgator.com. And this is so that you can get a massive discount on your hosting. Now what we're gonna do is start with the hatchling plan. And this is gonna give you a single domain and a free SSL certificate. Now what I recommend is starting there and then whenever your e-commerce store starts making a lot of money, you can switch over to the business plan, which is gonna give you unlimited domains, it's gonna give you a dedicated IP server, lots of cool tools. But you really don't need to worry about that now if you're just starting out with making your e-commerce store. So let's go ahead and click on buy now. 
and then here is where you can put in a domain that you want to buy or if you already own a domain you can just click on this tab right here so what I'm gonna do is type in CAPW for create a pro website shop.com and you can see that it is available here in green and if it's not available it'll be in red and it'll give you these suggestions but I highly recommend sticking with a com. it's the most legitimate looking one a lot of people don't really use these as much so I'm gonna go with this one and then just scroll down and make sure that you have domain privacy protection checked and I highly highly recommend this because otherwise your information like your email and your phone number are gonna be public and then solicitors will be able to call you and offer you all these services it's very annoying so HostGator offers this domain privacy protection okay so now let's scroll down and go to your package type and make sure that it says hatchling or whichever one that you chose and then the billing cycle so it's set at 36 months automatically which is going to give you the largest discount which is 61 percent off it's only going to be two dollars and 71 cents a month now you do pay this up front but in the long run you'll end up saving money or if you just want to try it out for a year what i recommend is doing the 12 months it's still going to be 55 percent off still pretty cheap hosting or if you're just like, you know what, I want to try this out, I'm really not sure yet, I just want to get a store set up and see how it goes, then you can just do the one month. It's still 30% off. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that one for now. And then I'm just going to scroll down and create a HostGator account. And then I'm going to confirm that email. and then a password and then just put in a security pin just like that and then we'll just scroll down and here is where you can put in your billing info so you can use either a credit card or you can use PayPal so I'm gonna go ahead and put in a credit card and then just scroll down to add additional services and what we're going to do is actually uncheck these. So uncheck secure your website because I've actually got videos on my channel that show you how to do this stuff completely for free. So you can uncheck all of these. And I will put links to those videos in the description in case you're interested. And make sure that SSL certificate is unchecked as well. This one will already come with a free SSL certificate and this is just a upgraded one. So you don't need to have that checked. And then we're just going to scroll down and make sure that your coupon code says create a pro website which it does and this is my affiliate link so I do receive a commission whenever you use this but it saves you a lot of money and it also helps fund these free YouTube tutorials that I'm putting out so it's a win-win for both but if you don't want to use it you don't have to and then you can just review your order right here which you can see that we've got a domain registration which went down from eighteen dollars to five dollars and then our one month hosting is 1095 it went down to 767 and again if you went with the 12 months or the 36 months then this will be a lot cheaper you will be paying the total up front though okay so we're gonna scroll down and agree to the terms and then just click check out now cool so now HostGator is setting up your account and this should just take a minute and then whenever you get to this page you can just go ahead and click on the X And then again, just go ahead and click on the X right here. Cool, so now we're inside the HostGator dashboard and we can move on to step number two, which is to install WordPress. And WordPress is a completely free software that we're gonna be using to build our website. It'll also allow us to download WooCommerce so that we can set up our shop, as well as download new themes and plugins and all these things to help your website function and look beautifully. So let's go do it. Okay, so in order to install WordPress, what we have to do is just go to our hosting package right here, which you can see the new domain that I just bought, and we're going to launch the cPanel. And once you're in the cPanel, you will see WordPress installer right here in the popular links. So just go ahead and click on that. And then just select the domain that you want to install WordPress to, which is going to be my new domain that I just bought. And then just click on next and then just give your shop a title, which I will show you how to change this later and we'll really focus on SEO to make sure that your website is going to be easier found in Google. But for now, you can just give it any title that you want. Oops. 
and then admin user, just put your name, and then first name, last name, and then admin email. And then just agree to the terms and click on install. Now WordPress is installing and this should only take a few seconds actually, it's pretty quick. And just like that, it is already done. Now the next thing that we want to do, and it's very, very important, is to copy this crazy password right here. And you're going to want to copy it and then save it somewhere on your computer safe so that you can use it to log in for the first time. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how to change this to your own custom password. Now, in order to log in to your new website, we're not actually going to use this little yellow login button because that's going to go away soon. So I want to show you the way that you should always get used to signing in to your WordPress website. So what we're going to do is just go up to a new tab and typing in your new domain name and then doing forward slash WP dash admin, just like that, and then click enter. And then this is the WordPress login page. And if you don't see this page, it will maybe look something like this. And that's because your website still has to propagate. And what is propagation, you may be asking? Propagation basically means that HostGator has to take your new domain name and send it out across the entire world to let every server in the world know that, hey, this new domain name now exists. And this process can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And they say it can take up to 24 hours, but I've never actually had it take that long. It's usually only about 30 minutes. So about every 10 minutes, just refresh the page. And whenever you get to a page that looks like this, then you'll be able to log in to your WordPress website. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. So I'm just going to put in my user, which was just my name, and then my password, which I copied from earlier. So I'm just going to paste that in and then just click on login. And congratulations, here we are inside of the WordPress dashboard, which looks a little daunting with all this stuff going on. So let's just go ahead and clean that up. So I'm just going to hit the X on pretty much everything that I see. I'm going to hit this X over here, dismiss. Let's dismiss that. Same with this. We're just going to close all of these boxes and make sure it looks nice and clean because we want to work in a clean environment. There we go. That is much better looking. So now what we want to do is change our password from that crazy one to a new custom password. So in order to do that, just go on over to users and then go to all users. And then just go ahead and click on your name. And then we're just going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we are going to go to new password and we're going to generate a new password. And you can just delete that crazy one that they give you. And then you can put in your own custom one. Just like that. And then click on update profile. Cool. So now we can move on to step number three, which is to secure your website. So if people are making payments on your site, you want to make sure that it's secure for them. So right now, if we go up to our website domain, you see that it's not secure. And if we click on it, it says your connection to the site is not secure. So we want to get that little lock symbol up here. So let's go ahead and do that. So just go on back over to your host gator. And then we are just going to go down to hosting and then just click on manage. And then if we just scroll down, you'll see in green right here, SSL management. So you can just click on manage. And we just want to verify that we actually have this SSL certificate, which it's just pending right now. And that may take a little while, but you don't need to upgrade or anything like that. We just want to verify that we have one. So once we've verified that this is actually here, we can just go back over to WordPress and then go over to plugins and then go to add new. And then we're just going to go over to the search bar over here and type in really simple SSL. And then you'll see the plugin right here. And we're going to go ahead and install it. And you can see that it has 4 million active installations and 5 stars. It's a great plugin. So then just click on activate. Cool. And then once that plugin is activated, we can just go ahead over to this little notification window here and click on go ahead activate SSL. And then you'll just be asked to sign in again.
and then it's just going to ask you to verify your email so I'll just say this email is correct cool now you got this little notification that says SSL activated and you can see up here we have the little lock symbol right here so our site is now secure cool so now we can move on to step number four which is to change your site title and tagline so if I just go up to the top here you can see that all I have is create a pro website shop and it doesn't really explain what this is about and it's not going to come up in Google search very well because it's not targeted towards certain keywords so let me show you how to do that with your shop so I'm just going to go down to settings and go over to general and then if we just scroll down you can see that we've got our site title and our tagline here so let me show you an example of what this would look like on Google for another shop so if I just go up to a new window and type in men's clothing just as an example and we just scroll down you can see we've got men's clothing urban outfitters now they kinda switch theirs backwards normally it would be the name and then men's clothing or whatever the keyword is but men's clothing is the keyword that they're going after so we wanna put in keywords for our shop that pertains to our products so I'm just gonna go back over to WordPress and for an example here I would just type in create a pro website shop and then do let's say premium clothing let's just say that that's the keyword that I want to go after and then you can add a tagline which is just a short explanation of what your products are about so I will just delete this and I'm just gonna put in my keyword again premium clothing and I'll say for techies or something along those lines now this is just an example but you'd really want to make sure that this tagline and the site title have your keyword in it a few times and it might not be an overall keyword like this it might be an actual product maybe you're selling I don't know PS5 games or something like that you would want to put that here in your title and your tagline and I'm just gonna capitalize this make sure that it looks nice just like that and then I'm just gonna go down and hit save right here and then if we go up to the top you can see that it is now changed to create a pro website shop and then little bar premium clothing and once that's done we can move on to step number five which is to activate a new theme so our current theme for our website doesn't look too great because it's the basic one that WordPress comes with so if I just go up here and then go to visit site I'll just open that up in a new tab and I'll just exit out of men's clothing here and this is our current website which does not look very good um, hopefully you agree so let's go ahead and click on the X and we'll install a new theme so that we can start customizing our website a bit more so I'm gonna click on the X and then just go over to appearance and then go to themes and then if we just scroll down you can see that these are the current themes that it comes with uh, that WordPress comes with and we're on the 2019 version and we don't have that many so what we want to do is add a new theme so I'm gonna click on add new theme and then I already know what theme I want to go for but if you want you can browse through these themes but if you're following along with this tutorial I highly highly recommend following along with the same theme that I use it is the best theme out there and I recommend it in all of my videos it's called Astra and if we just scroll down you can see Astra right here so I'm gonna go ahead and install that and then click activate awesome so now we can move on to step number six which is to import a template site so the reason why I recommend starting with a template site is because work smarter not harder there's really no reason to build the whole thing completely from a blank page when you can start with a starter template and then just customize it to make it your own so you've already got the foundation set up for you so what you can do is actually click on this little get started button right here or what we can do is just go on over to Astra options underneath appearance and click on that and then over here on the right you'll see install importer plugin so that we can get started with these templates so let's go ahead and click on that cool and then it's gonna ask you to select a page builder I'm gonna go with Elementor it's definitely the best one which is why it's first on the list 
I recommend it in all of my videos. This is the awesome drag and drop page builder plugin. It's amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then now you've got all of these awesome templates that you can browse through. And what you really wanna be looking for is just the general layout because you're gonna be able to customize all the photos and the text and the products on your page, everything else. But you really wanna look for one that really speaks to you and your brand. And you can go up here and you can search by different ones. If you click on the all button, you can go to business, other, blog, and e-commerce. So I'll go ahead and click on e-commerce. And here are all of the e-commerce templates here. So what I'm gonna do is actually go with this one. And if you wanna view one, all you have to do is just click on it. And you can see an example of it here and you can scroll down the website. So we've got all these featured products here, these cool windows that we can customize. And you can also see the about page, the contact page, all the pages that actually come with this starter template. So what I'm gonna do is just click on import complete site. And this is the brand store template here, which I highly recommend. So just go ahead and click on import complete site. And then we're just gonna click on import. And this import process will take a few minutes. Awesome, so our website has imported successfully. So let's go ahead and view the site. And here it is, it's looking great. If we scroll down, we've got this cool parallax effect here where the image stays in place. We've got all of our brands here. And then you've got different categories to shop by based on sales. You've got featured products. This little banner here, you've got your footer. It's a really nice looking website. And this template already comes with WooCommerce installed, which is awesome. So I'm gonna show you that. So I'll just go back over to my site here and then click on dashboard. And we can exit out of these windows up here. We don't need these anymore. And then you can see we've got WooCommerce over here on the left, which is awesome. It already comes installed, which is why I highly recommend using these starter templates with the Astra theme. But if you do wanna install WooCommerce from scratch, I will show you where that is. So if you just go on over to plugins and then go over to add new, then you can just go on over to the search bar and type in WooCommerce. And then you can see that WooCommerce is right here and it's already active for me because it already came installed but this is where you can install it. Okay, so before we go any further, I do recommend going into the description and downloading the follow along images that I provide. It's the images that I'm gonna be using to actually build my products and the rest of my website, and I highly recommend following along. So you can find all of those downloadable assets in the link below. So go ahead and click on that. Okay, so I will be showing you how to customize your homepage a little bit later in this video, but right now I wanna jump into step number seven, which is to create a simple product. So this is the easiest product to create. It's just one product and there's no variations to it or anything like that. So let me show you how to do that. But first we actually need to delete our current products. So I'm just gonna go on over to products and then go to all products. And this is because the starter template comes with all of these pre-made products already. So you can see we've got a bunch of them here. So what I'm gonna do is just click on this box up at the top which will select all of them. And then I'm gonna go over to bulk actions and I'm going to move them to the trash. And then just click on apply. And then we'll scroll down and we've got our second page of products. So we need to click on that box again, go to bulk actions and move to trash. And then just click on apply. Cool, so now you can see that we have no products found. So let's go ahead and create a simple product. So to do that, just go on over to products and then go over to add new. And then we're just gonna scroll down and you can give your product a name. So I'm gonna be doing a hat or a cap. So I'm gonna call this create a pro website cap, just like that. And then you can put in a description of this item. So what I'm gonna do is grab some dummy text. So I'm gonna go over here and type in dummy text. And I'm just going to grab some. We'll just grab this text right here. And then go back over and paste that in. 
but you would realistically want to write a description of what this product is about. And then we're just going to go up to the top and go over to screen options and make sure that all of these boxes here are checked except for custom fields and slug, which they are. But if not, just go ahead and do that. And we're going to close those options and then just scroll down. And you can see here for product data, we've got simple product right here. And you've also got grouped affiliate variable products, which I will get into in the next steps. But for now, we're going to do a simple product and it's not virtual or downloadable. So here you can set a price, which it's automatically set to euros. So we want to change that to US dollars if you're in the US or wherever your currency is. So let me show you how to do that. First, we're just going to go over here, right here, and click on publish. And that is to save our work. So to change the currency, we're just going to go over to WooCommerce, and then we're going to go to settings. And we can kind of close out of some of these boxes up here that keep getting in our way, just like that, kind of clean things up a little bit. And then just scroll down and you can put in your country. So I'll put in the United States. And I'm actually going to select where I am from, which is going to be Texas. Somewhere right there, Texas. And then you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you've got currency options. So right now it's set to pounds. So I'm gonna change that to US dollars. So I'm gonna type in United States or let's try United States, just like that. Grab the dollar and then you can kind of change how that's going to look here. So we've got the currency position on the left, which is typical for the US dollar. And then the thousand separator is a comma, decimal is a dot the number of decimals we've got two, which I like those settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those and click on save changes. Cool, so now let's go back to our simple product and keep going with that. So I'm gonna to go to products, all products. And then I'm gonna click on the Creative Pro website cap. and then just scroll down again and we will put in our price. So I'm gonna do something like 1995 and then you can also set a sale price here. So let's say that I was feeling generous, I wanted to give this one away for let's say 1495, something like that. Or you could do 1095, whatever it might be. And then you can also schedule this sale price by clicking on the schedule button. And then you can just say from which dates. So you can click in this box, select a date where you want it to start, and then you would select a date where you want that to end. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as a constant sale. So I'm gonna click on cancel. And then we're just gonna go over to inventory. And here you can put in a SKU number, which is basically just a stock keeping unit number. So in this case, I am just going to put in 0001. And then we're gonna click on manage stock. We're going to enable stock management. And then you can say how much of this you have in stock. So I'll say maybe I have 50 of these hats. And then you can allow back orders. So right now it's automatically set to do not allow, but if you would like to put back orders on, then you can do that and allow, but notify the customer, which is just common courtesy, which I really recommend. So I'm gonna click on allow, but notify customer. And then the low stock threshold is basically when you'll get a notification that, hey, now you're running down low on this, WordPress is going to actually email you and let you know. So I'm gonna say something like, let's do 10, just like that. And then we'll go over to shipping. And then here is where you'd wanna put in the weight and the dimensions, which are set to kilograms and centimeters, which you can change by going back over to the settings. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just gonna go up and update this. And then I'm gonna go back over to WooCommerce and then click on settings. And then we'll just go up to the shipping tab. And then we're just gonna go up to the products tab.
and then just scroll down and you will see measurements right here. So our weight unit is set to kilograms. I'm gonna change mine to pounds, which is LBS. And then the dimensions unit is set to centimeters. We'll just say something like inches, like that. And then click on save changes. And then let's go back to our product again. So we'll go to products, all products. And then click on create a pro website cap or whatever your product name is. And then we're just going to scroll back down and go back to shipping. And you can see that now we've got pounds and inches. So I'm really not sure how much a hat weighs. So I will put in something like one pound and then the dimensions we'll just put in something random like let's say eight inches in length by I don't know uh, 10 inches in width or maybe vice versa those would be and then height we'll just say five inches something like that I'm really not sure that might be a very funny looking hat and then we're not going to worry about shipping class. This is mainly for grouping certain products together that people order. You can see if you hover over this little question mark here, that's what it says. So we're just going to leave that and then go to linked products. And then here is where you can do upsells and cross sells, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. I'm not going to get into it right now, but definitely a valuable place to do that right uh, let's say. And then we're not going to worry about shipping class. This is mainly for grouping products together that people order into one box. You can see if you hover over the little question mark here, that's what it says. So we're going to go ahead and leave that and then go over to linked products. And then this is for upsells and cross sells, which I will be talking about a little bit later. So I'm going to leave this blank for right now. So then we're going to go over to attributes. And then here is where we could put in different variations of this product, which we don't really want to do because it's a simple product. So it's only just one item, it's one color, one size, it's very basic. So we're going to go ahead and leave that and then go over to advanced. And here's where you can add a purchase note. So if somebody adds this to their cart, we could say something like, thank you for purchasing this hat, something like that. And then we're going to leave menu order alone and you want to make sure that enable reviews is checked so that if somebody likes your product, they can go on your website, leave a review about how much they liked it, and then you can go in and approve those reviews. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked. And then here you can also put in a product short description. So this is what's going to come up underneath the product on the shop page. So we could say something like this hat is super stylish and will make you very popular. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Doesn't have to be too crazy, just a short description of what the product is. And now let's go ahead and add a product image. So if we just scroll down here, you'll see product image down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to set product image. I'm gonna to go to select files. You can also get free images from Pixabay over here but I'm gonna upload my own files. So I'm gonna go back to upload files and then go to select files. And then I'm just gonna to go to my desktop and grab the product. So I'm gonna go with the cap right here and click on open. And then you can see it has now added that to our little media library right here and you can see all the other images that actually came with the site which we're just gonna leave alone for now. And you can see over here the product size, or sorry, the image size is 960 by 1200. This is a pretty good size to go with. You really don't want too large of images on your website because those large images are gonna take a while to load and they're gonna slow down your website. And all your images should be around that exact same size. And it's okay to have a few that are not. I actually have a few that are not in the images that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial, but the bulk of them are in this size because they look better on the shop page like that. And then for the alt text, we'll put in cap. And this is good for Google search results because Google searches images as well. So now we'll just set the product image. And you can see it was just added right here. And then if you have multiple images of that product, you can add them to a product gallery right here. So you can just add a product gallery and select all of those images. But for this image, I only have one. Okay, so now moving on to a sub step. 
This is to create categories and tags. So categories and tags are awesome because they help customers find more products on your site that pertain to a certain category. So right now, these are our categories. We've got uncategorized, accessories, men, women, and so on. So what we want to do is add new ones. So I'm just going to add a new category. And I'll call this hats. And then just add new category. And then I can also add a category underneath hats. So maybe I want to do something like ball caps. And then I will add that as well. And then I will show you how to place that underneath the hats category. And I'm also going to uncheck uncategorized. But I could also do other types of hats. You could do sombreros or you know any sort of hat you want. And you can put them underneath the hats category. But first, let me show you how to do tags. So right here, you can add a product tag. So these are just ways that people can search for products on your website. So I would say something like hat. I'll do cap like that. And then you could add any other sort of tags that you want. But I'm going to leave these two for now. And then I'm just going to go up to update to save my work. So now let's go in and fix those categories. So I'm going to go over to categories, which is underneath products. And then if we just scroll down, you can see all of our categories right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the ones that this comes with, like men and women, and even accessories. I'll go to bulk actions and delete them. And click on apply. And then I'm just going to scroll down and click on ball caps. And then we can choose a parent category. So this is the one that's going to house this category. So I'll just say hats. And then you can also add a picture for that category. So I'm going to upload that same image. We'll just go to our media library and then click on the hat. And then we'll just go to use image. And then we'll just go over to update. Cool. So now let's just go back to categories right here. Or you can click on it in this menu here. Cool, and then now you can see ball caps has this little line next to it and it's underneath hats. And you can also add an image to hats as well if you'd like. And now I can show you what that product is going to look like on our store. So I'm gonna go up to my website name and go to visit site. And we'll click on open link in new tab. And then we're just gonna go over to store. And now you can see our cap right here. And it's got this cool little sale tag on it, which is awesome. It's got our sale price on there. And you can kind of get an overview of what our store is looking like. We've got this cool filter by price thing here, which you can drag around. And let's say we wanted to filter 10 to $10. I could just click on filter. And then it will get rid of that little ball cap. So it'll say, OK, there's nothing actually existing here because we don't have any products that are only $10 or less. So we'll just go back. And then we've got browse by categories. So customers can click on this and say, OK, I want to look at all the hats. So then they can just click on hats. And then all of the hats that we put in would show up here, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and click on the product. And you can see the image. It's cool. We can kind of scroll around the image like this. We've got the SKU number. It's got the categories and tags on it. It shows that 50 are in stock, and it can be back ordered. We can choose the amount of how many of these we want to add to our cart, like this. And then we've got our sale price as well. And then we've got our short description here. So everything is looking really good. So then I can just add this to the cart. And then it's going to say three of these caps are in your cart. And then you can just click on View Cart. And then you can see we've got this cool cart page where we've got all of our products that we add to the cart. Then you've got this coupon code section, which I will get to later about how to create coupon codes. And I'll also show you how somebody can leave a review on this product. So if we just scroll down, you can see we've got reviews. And then you can leave a review. Now right now, if I left this review, it would be under my admin login here. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to the dashboard. And we can close out of this other window here. And then you can see your site is currently displaying a coming soon page up, up here. So just go ahead and click on click here to launch the site. Because right now it's not going to be active on the internet until you do that. So I'm going to click there to make sure that it is launched. 
Cool, now we've got this little congratulations message right here that says your site is now live. So in order to leave a review, I'm gonna go to Shift, Command, N, and grab a new incognito window. And then I'm gonna go back to my store. And then I'm gonna click on the cap. And I'm just going to grab this URL right here. And then go to that incognito window. And I'm going to paste that in and click enter. And now we are live on our store. And then I could just go down to reviews and let's just say I'm a customer right now. I want to leave a review. I'll leave it five stars and I'll say this cap is really nice quality and I love it. Just like that. And I'll put in my name and then I'll put in a email for that. And then I will click on submit. Cool, so now you can see that that was now added. It's got my little Gmail picture on it, got the review there. So now we can just go back and we can actually close on this little X here. We'll just go back to WordPress and then we're just gonna hit on the dashboard here so we'll go back to dashboard. And then you can see we've got a little notification here in comments. So this is for the review. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then you can see that we have to approve it now. So it's gonna say zero approved. It's gonna show you what the comment is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on approve. Cool, so now that it's gonna be active and live on our website, which is really cool. Okay, so now we can move on to step number eight, which is to create a variable product. Variable products are awesome because you can have different variations of it. It could be different variations in color or size and so on. So let's go ahead and make one. So I'm gonna go over to products and then go to add new. And then we're just gonna add the product name here. So we'll call this long sleeve. It's gonna be a long sleeve T. So actually I'll add T to that. And then we'll add a description here. So we'll go back grab our dummy text and then I'm just gonna put that here in the description but you would want to be writing your own here and then we're just gonna scroll down and we're gonna to go to product data and change simple product to variable product just like that and we'll put in SKU number which again is a stock keeping unit so we'll do 00002 and then we can also manage the stock again so we'll just click on that and we'll say that we have 50 of these and then you can allow back orders if you want and so on. And then the low threshold will do 10 again. And then for now, we're going to skip shipping and linked products. And we're gonna go over to attributes and we're just gonna add a new attribute. So you can see here, we've got nothing here. So what we're gonna do is click on add and we're gonna give this a name, so we'll say size. And then we will add them in and separate them with this little line here. So I'll do small, medium, large, and extra large, just like that. And then we also wanna check used for variations right here, because we're gonna create different variations of this based on these sizes. So then I'm gonna click on save attributes. So now you can see we've got size here. So let's add another one and we're gonna do color. So now let's just scroll down and we'll type in color. And then we're going to do blue, red, green, just like that. And then again, click on use for variations and click on save attributes. Then we're just gonna go over to variations and then we're just gonna to go to add variation and we're gonna to go to create variations from all attributes. And then click on go. And then it's gonna say, are you sure you want to link all variations? We're gonna say, okay. Cool, 12 variations added. So let's just click on okay again. And then you can see all of the variations here. Okay, so we're gonna go over to 12 variations and expand this so that we can see all of them. 
and then we're just going to add a stock keeping unit for each one. So we'll do 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, and then we'll do A. And then we'll go down to the next one, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, B. And then you would keep going. So I'll just do these really quick. And then we just want to add a price for each one. So let's say that I want this long sleeve to be, let's say, 1995. And then I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to put that in each one of these. So for the small red one, same price. And so on. So I'll do the rest of these really quick. And then if you wanted, you could maybe make the extra large a little bit more expensive since it costs more material. So you could say something like, I don't know, $21.95. And then we'll just copy that and put that in the rest of the extra large ones. So that's for the blue. We'll also do red and paste that in. And then as well for extra large for green, we'll paste that in. And then let's go ahead and add all these two categories. So we'll just go back up and go to categories and we're just going to add a new category and we'll do let's say tees and add that category and then we'll do long sleeves and then we'll make the parent category tees so that it shows up underneath tees now we'll do add new category just like that so you can see it here and then tags we'll call this tees and we'll do long sleeves or long sleeve just like that and then let's just scroll down and we'll add a product image so this will be the main image that shows up whenever they actually click on this and then they'll be able to select all the different ones and they'll see different images which we'll add in here but first we need just need a main product image so let's just set product image and then we're going to go to upload files and then select files and then we're just going to grab all of our long sleeves so we've got three of them we'll just put all these in click open and now they're all uploading and I'm just going to select the blue one to be the main one that shows up and then I'll just add in the alt text as well so we'll say long sleeve and then set product image there we go, so that'll be the main one that shows up. And then let's go ahead and add one to these each individual variations. So we've got small blue, we'll just upload an image, we'll select the blue one, set variation image. Again, we'll go over to red for the small and grab the red one, and then set variation image, and then we'll go to the green, and we'll grab the green one, and then set variation image. And then we'll move on to the mediums, so blue. And I'm just going to speed through the rest of these so I don't bore you. And then we're just going to go ahead and click on Save Changes. Cool. And then we can actually just scroll down and we can add a short description. So we'll say something like this long sleeve is very comfortable and super stylish. And then we're just going to go up and we're going to publish. And then let's go ahead and see what that looks like on the store. So I'm going to go up in here and then just go over to visit store. I'm just going to open that up in a new tab. And now you can see we've got long sleeve tee here. It's looking good. And it says 1995 to 2195. That's because we made the extra large just a little bit more expensive. So we'll just click on that. And then you can see, we can kind of scroll around the image again, and we've got size. We can choose our size, so let's say I'm a medium, and then I want a blue one. Or I can go to red, and you can see the red ones like that, or green, just like that. So let's say I want a blue one. You can say how many you want, and then just add it to the cart. And then that has been added to our cart. So let's just head on back to WordPress. So we'll just close out of that. And then now we can move on to step number nine, which is to create a digital product. 
So this product is gonna be something like a Zoom session or coaching or any sort of online service that you're providing. And then in the next step, I'll show you how to create a downloadable digital product. But for now, let's do just a digital product. So we're just gonna go over to add new product over here. So I'm gonna say something like two hour website coaching with Dale, just like that. And then we can add in a description here. So I'm gonna grab my dummy text again and I'm going to add that in, just like that. And then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna leave it on simple product and we're gonna make this a virtual product, just like that. And then we'll set the price. Let's say this is gonna be something like, let's say 399, 99. Pretty expensive, <laughs> but just for the sake of filtering our products later, I'm gonna put in something a bit more expensive here. And then I'm not gonna add a sale price to that. And then over in inventory, we are going to say that this is sold individually. And it's gonna be allow one of this item to be bought in a single order. So we're gonna go ahead and check on that. And we can also add a SKU number to this. So we'll say 00003, just like that. We're not gonna have any linked products as in up sales or cross sales to this or attributes or anything like that but we will go into advanced and we'll just set a purchase note, say something like, thank you for purchasing this two hour, let's say coaching via Zoom, something like that. And then we can just scroll down and add a short description. So this could be two hour website coaching via Zoom with Dale McManus. You can ask any website or e-commerce related questions in this session, something like that. And then we're just gonna add this category in here. So we're gonna go back up to categories we're gonna add new category, and we're gonna say something like services, like that, and then add new category. And then we're gonna add a tag as well. So we'll say website coaching, we'll say service, and we'll say Zoom session, something like that. Any tags that somebody might type in to find this. And then we're also gonna add a product image. So I'm just going to scroll down to product image and set a product image. And then I'm gonna to go to upload files and then select files. And then I'm just going to grab that image for the zoom coaching and click on open. And then set product image. And now that we've got that all set, the only thing that's missing is a way for them to know that, hey, I'm going to contact you with a link to Zoom via the email that you use whenever you buy the product. So what we're gonna do is actually change this purchase note and we're gonna change it to something like, I will email you within 24 hours with a Zoom time and link, something like that. And then we're just gonna click on publish. And then let's go ahead and look at that product. So we're gonna go up here and visit our store again. And boom, there is our website coaching, our digital product. So we'll just go ahead and click on that. And you can see all we've got is the add to cart button because you can only purchase one of these at a time because it's sold individually. And there is my ridiculous face there. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we've got our description down here. We've got our short description up here. Everything's looking pretty good. So we'll just go back and then we can just go ahead and close out of this. 
And now we'll move on to step number 10, which is to create a downloadable product. So this downloadable product is going to be something virtual and downloadable. So it's going to be something like a PDF document for an ebook, or it's going to be images or video of some sorts. So let's go ahead and make that. So I'm just going to go over to add new underneath products. And then I'm going to add my product name in here. I'm going to say ebook, how to create a profitable e-commerce store. And then we'll just add in a description here. So I'm just going to grab that text again. And then we'll just scroll down. And we're going to leave this as simple product again. And we're going to do virtual and downloadable. And then we can set a price. So we'll say this is going to be something like $9.99. Pretty cheap ebook. And I'm not going to put a sale price in. But we are going to do a file, or we can do a URL. So I'm just going to click on Add File. And then you can put in the URL so that whenever they purchase it, it will send them to that URL where they can access the ebook. Or you can actually choose a file itself if you want to. Now, I don't actually have an ebook written up or pasted anywhere on a URL. So I'm just going to put the URL to my website just to kind of fill this with something. But ideally, you would want to put, whoops, create a pro website.com. Ideally, you would want to put the actual URL to this ebook or actually choose the ebook as a file so that it will hit their downloads. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as that. And then you can set a download limit. So let's say that I only want them to be able to download this, let's say, two times. Maybe they messed up the first one, they need another one, or they want to get it on a couple different devices, whatever it might be. I'll just set that as two. And then you can set an expiration on that as well if you want to. So the number of days before the download link expires. So let's say I only want them to access this for 30 days, something like that. Then we could just leave that in there. Or if you want them to be able to download at any time, you could just do never. So I'll actually just leave it as that. And then the short description will say this ebook will teach you step by step how to create a profitable e-commerce store and help you make a passive income. Something like that. And then we're just going to add this to categories. So we're going to go up to categories and click on add new. And we'll do ebooks. And then add new category. And then tags, we will say ebooks, something like that, or ebook. And then we're just going to go get a product image. So we'll set product image. And then go over to upload files, select files. And then I'll grab my ebook image that I made, click on open, just like that and then click on set product image. And there we go. There's our ebook. Pretty fancy looking. Helps to have an image like this. And then we're just going to go up and click on publish. And then let's go view that in the shop. So again, I'll go to the visit store, open link in a new tab. And now you can see we've got our ebook here, 9.99 underneath the ebooks category. And there you go. So now you can add as many of them to the cart as you want. Typically, you only really want to do one. And then you can add that to the cart. Awesome. So now we'll move on to step number 11, which is to create an affiliate product. An affiliate product is somebody else's product that you have a commission off of whenever you sell. So let's go ahead and make one. So I'm going to just cancel out of this. And then we're going to go over to products and add new. And then I'm just going to add the product name in here. So what I'm going to be selling is discounted web hosting with HostGator, which I'm actually an affiliate for. So we'll just say discounted web hosting with HostGator. Like that. And then we'll add our description, more dummy text, using this pretty often. 
Awesome. And then we'll just scroll down. And underneath product data, instead of doing a simple product, we're now going to change this to external affiliate product. Like that. And then you can enter in the external URL to the product. So for here, I have https create a pro website dot com slash hosting. And this is my link that will go to HostGator for that affiliate web hosting. So now the button text will just say something like get web hosting, like that. And then we're not actually going to set a price because they are going to be paying for it on the affiliate partner's website. So we're actually just going to leave this as free technically. And then we are just going to add in a short description. So we'll say something like 60% off web hosting for let's say 32 months and we'll say something like 55% off web hosting for 12 months and then we'll do something like 31% off web hosting for one month. Something like that. And let's just fix this. There we go. And then we're just going to add this to a category. So we'll just say affiliate products, or we could just say what it is actually. We'll say something like web hosting and then add new category. And then product tags, we'll say web hosting again. And then let's set a product image. Upload files. Select files. And then I'm just going to add the HostGator logo here. Click on open. And then set product image. There we go. So now let's just go up and hit publish. And then let's go check that out on our shop. So I'm just going to right click, open a new tab. And there it is, discounted web hosting. And then you can see it here. We've got the little get web hosting button right here. So we can just click on that. And then that will take you to the affiliate URL, which is the same one that I showed in the beginning of this tutorial for discounted web hosting. Pretty sweet. And then you actually make a commission off of that whenever somebody were to purchase web hosting. And you can be an affiliate for anything. It could be a clothing brand. It could be any sort of digital products. There are so many affiliate programs out there, and I highly recommend joining them. Cool, so now let's move on to step number 12, which is to create a grouped product. So this grouped product is basically going to be one product that has different products inside of it, and you can add as many as you want to your cart. So let me show you what I mean. Let's just go on over to products and go to add new. And we are just gonna call this one, create a pro website laptop skin. So I'm going to do different types of laptop skins. That's going to be all within this same grouped product. So then we can just add a description. And then we'll just come down here, go to product data, and we're going to change this from simple product to grouped product. And then we can add in an SKU number. So we'll say, I think I skipped a few SKU numbers. So we'll just say something like 0005, something like that. And then we're just going to add a short description. So we'll just say an awesome blueprint texture laptop skin for your MacBook Pro. Mac Nook. Let's do MacBook Pro. Just like that. And then we'll just go up and add this to a category. So we'll say laptop skins. 
and then add new category. And then tags, we'll do laptop skin, something like that. Or we'll do laptop cover or MacBook skin. And you could even maybe do tech or accessories, maybe computer accessories, things like that. You want to add as many tags relevant to this product as possible. And then let's just add in a product image. This is going to be our main product image. And then we'll put a couple different ones in here. We'll go to upload files, select files, and we're just going to grab the laptop skin. So we'll just do this top skin right here and click on open and then set product image. And there's our laptop skin right there. Made that myself in Photoshop, pretty proud of it. So now we'll go up and we're just going to publish. And now let's just go on over to the store again and right click and visit the store. And then we can just click on the laptop skin here. But what you can see is that we don't have any other products within this product. So there's a funny little tricky way to do this. So I'm going to show you that right now. Let's just go ahead and close out of this. Or actually, we can keep that and just update it later. So let's just go back over to WordPress. And then we're going to go over to Products and then go to Add New. And then we're just going to give this a name. Create a pro website. Laptop top skin and we will just give this a little dash something like that laptop skin top skin and then you can add in a description here if you want to which I think I still have saved just like that and then we're gonna go over here to catalog visibility which is in the publish section we're going to go to edit and we're going to change this to hidden just like that and then click on OK. And then we're just going to go down and we'll just add this to laptop skins right here. You can add a tag like top skin and laptop skins. And then you can set in a price. So we will say that this one is maybe $10.99, just like that. And then we're just going to go down and put in a product image again. So we'll do set product image. We're actually going to grab that same one. That's just the top skin. And then set product image. And then just go up and publish. Cool. And then once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and click on copy to new draft. Cool, so it's gonna make an exact copy of that, and we're just gonna change this to another one. So this one will be the keyboard skin, like that. And then you can set the price for that. So we could maybe do, now let's do, you know, I don't know, 13 or 12.99. And then we've got it same in here, so we'll just add keyboard skin to the tags. We've already got our category selected here. And then we'll just go down and change this product image. So we'll just remove that one. And then we'll go to set product image. And then upload files, select files. And we'll grab the keyboard skin. And we'll also grab the bottom skin here as well. We're gonna end up needing that one anyway. So then click on open. And then with the keyboard one selected, we're just going to set product image. There we go. And then just scroll up. And then we want to just edit the permalink right here. So right now it says top skin copy. So let's just change that to create a pro website, laptop skin, and then we'll do keyboard skin like that and click OK. And then we're just going to go over to publish. And then again, we're going to go to copy to a new draft. And then we're just going to do our bottom skin. So I'm just going to change this to bottom skin. 
and then just scroll down and we can set the price on that so let's say we'll go back down to 1099 and then we can set the tags so we'll do bottom skin and then it's in the laptop skins category and then we'll just go down change the product image so we'll do remove product image and then set product image and then we're just going to grab the bottom skin right here set product image there we go there's our image and then just scroll up and then edit that permalink again so create a pro website laptop skin and then we'll do bottom skin and then click OK and then just click on publish cool so now we've made all those hidden products so they're not going to actually show up in our shop so what we need to do is just go back to all products and then we're just going to go to the original product which is the creator pro website laptop skin and we're just going to click on that and then just scroll down and go to linked products and then grouped products we're just gonna search for these so we'll do top skin and we'll just grab the top skin we'll do keyboard skin grab the keyboard skin and then the bottom skin and grab that as well and then now if we just go up to update we can now go over to our shop. So let's go up to our name. Actually, we've already got it pulled up here. So let's just go to this and we will just refresh this page. And then now you can see we've got all of our different products added in this main laptop skin product. So now we can just say, okay, I want maybe just the top skin and the bottom skin, but I didn't want to buy maybe the keyboard skin. Or maybe you want multiple of each one. It will give them an option to choose which of these they want and then just add that to the cart. Now the only thing is that we've only got this one image here so they can't actually see what these other ones are going to look like. So the way to get around this is to create a product gallery. So let me show you how to do that. So we'll just go back and then just scroll down and then you'll see the product image and then you'll see product gallery. So let's go ahead and click on add product gallery images and then we'll just grab all three of these and then click on add to gallery and then now you can see all these images here so we'll just go up and click on update and then we can go back over to our shop and then we can just refresh this page and it's gonna say are you sure we're gonna say yes and then boom there is all of our images which is pretty cool so you can just click on one and see what it looks like now we actually added this one in twice you don't have to do that if you don't want to you can just exclude this in the product gallery and just have these two but now they can actually see all of the images okay so now let's move on to step number 13 which is to set up upsells and cross sells so upsells is when you're on a product like this on the shop and it's gonna say hey if you like this product you may also like this product and it will display down here and then cross sales are whenever you actually go to the cart. So we'll just go to our cart and it's going to recommend products down here in this area. It's going to say, hey, before you check out, do you want this product? And it's going to recommend a product, whatever product that you set. So let's go ahead and set that up. So I'm just going to go over to WordPress and then I'm just going to go down to all products. And then I'm just going to go to the cap, the very first product that we made and click on that and then just scroll down and then we're gonna go to linked products and then we're gonna set our products in here so let's say I want to recommend the long sleeve so I'll just type that in and then I can grab that and we'll just grab the main one just like that and I might also want to recommend another one let's say something like let's do the zoom coaching obviously you wouldn't want to actually put this product in there because it's not really relevant to the cap but just so you can kind of see multiple products in here and then for the cross cells we're gonna put maybe the laptop skin something like that 
and we'll just grab that one, put that in the cross cells, and then we'll just go over to update. And now let's go over to that hat product. So we're going to go back to our store. Let's click on store. And then we're going to click on the cap. And then if we scroll down, you can see you may also like, and it's going to recommend the coaching and the long sleeve tee, which is pretty cool. So if it's clothing, obviously I recommend recommending more clothing down here, or maybe other hats in your hats category. So now let's just say that we go to our cart. So let's maybe just click on the little cart symbol up here. By the way, you can get this little summary of your cart if you hover over it, which is pretty cool, and it even shows you the subtotal down there. So then we can just go to view cart, and then just scroll down, and then you'll see cross cells right here. You may be interested in, and it's gonna show the laptop skin. So that is pretty sweet. It's just a little extra way to entice someone to buy a product before they actually check out. Okay, so now let's move on to step number 14, which is to create a filter by price sidebar. So right now, if we actually went over to our store, you will see that we've got this whole sidebar over here on the left that has our best sellers, it's got categories, and a filter by price. And sometimes this filter by price won't be working right away, and that's because of your permalinks. So let me show you how to fix that. So if we just go back to WordPress, and then we just go all the way down to settings, and then go to permalinks. What we want to do is change this from custom structure to post name. So underneath custom structure, you probably had this crazy string of symbols and letters and things here. You want to change that to post name because we want it to display creativeprowebsite.com slash store. So we're going to change that to post name and then click save changes. And then we're just going to go back to our product page and update it. And now we've got creativeprowebsite.com slash store slash. And that extra slash is for whenever we click on another product, it will be added behind the store. So now if we go here and we filter by price, let's say we want to do zero to, let's say $10. We'll just filter that. And now it's working and it's showing both of our products that are under $10, which this one was technically free on our store. And then this one is $9.99. So now let me show you how to edit this sidebar. Let's say you want the filter by price up at the top. Or maybe you want this whole sidebar over on the right side of the screen. All you have to do is just click on Customize. And then we're just going to go over to Sidebar. And then you'll see down here we've got WooCommerce and it says Left Sidebar. So we can change that to the right if we want. Which I really like. I think it looks a lot better like that. So now that it's on the right, what we can do is just click on Publish. And then let's go in and actually edit the widgets here so that the filter by price is up at the top. And I'll show you how to add new ones. So what we're going to do is just click on the X. And then we're just going to go back to the dashboard. And then we'll just close out of this other window. So we've just got our one dashboard. And then from here, we're just going to go over to Appearance. And then click on Widgets. Cool. So from here, you can see that we've got a WooCommerce sidebar right here. So you can just open that up and we've got product search, our best sellers, browse by categories, and then our filter by price. So all we have to do is just click and drag that up to the top. And now that's going to display up at the top, which I'll show you. I'll just open this up in a new tab. Now you can see filter by price is up at the top. So let's say that you want to maybe add the cart over here to the sidebar. You can just click and drag that in and we'll just drag it towards the bottom so they can get a little overview of their cart there at the bottom and then now if we go back and update this if we scroll all the way down there we go there's an overview of their cart which looks pretty cool and to remove any one of these that you don't want let's say that you maybe don't want the product search you can just go in and hit the delete button and then again, we'll go back and refresh this. And now there is no search. And I actually like that search function, so I'm going to go ahead and add that back. So I'm just going to scroll down and find the product search. 
which is right here. And I'm just going to drag that back in, just like that. And again, we'll just go back and update that. So now let's move on to step number 15, which is to customize your shop. So this is the fun part. This is where we're actually going to be able to customize the whole look and feel of our shop or our store. So to do that, let's just go on over to customize. And we can go ahead and delete this other WordPress dashboard here. And then we're going to actually update the layout a little bit and change that. So we'll go to global and then go to container. And then if we scroll down, you'll see WooCommerce layout right here, and it's at full width contained. So if we want, you could do full width stretched, which is going to look a little funny, but I just want to show you that you can change this. So everything's kind of stretched all the way to the sides. You can do boxed, which is going to put everything in this big white box. But I personally think the default full width contained actually looks the best. All right, so let's just go ahead and go back and then back again. And then we're just going to go down to WooCommerce. And then we can go to Store Notice. And we can actually enable a store notice. So if we just check this little box, it's going to give us this little notice up at the top. So maybe if you're not done working on it, you can write something in here if you'd like to. But I'm going to go ahead and just leave that off and then go back. And then we'll go to product catalog. And then here is where you can change the amount of columns on the shop page. So right now we've got four. If you wanted, you could change it to maybe two. And your products are going to show up a bit bigger like that. I personally think four looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. And then you can change the sorting on your products and the category display, you can change that to subcategories or vice versa. I think displaying the products within the category is the right way to go though. And if you wanted, instead of displaying products here, let's say that somebody clicked on your store and then it would show all of the categories, you can change this to show categories on the shop page display. And then it's gonna show them all of the categories and obviously you'd wanna put an image in each one of these and then they could just click on whatever one and then see the products within those categories. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave it on show products. So we'll just go back. And then we can go to product images. And here we can set a custom image size for all of our images, but they look pretty good right now, so I'm really not gonna mess with them. If you want, you can also change the cropping. So right now they're just one by one, which are squares. You could add in a custom one here, and that's going to change the whole look and feel of these images. So right now they're cropped even more. But again, I'm going to do one by one and just leave them as squares. And then just click Publish to save your work. And then just go back. And then we're going to go to Cart. And you want to make sure that Enable Cross Cells is checked. That way the cross cells that we set up earlier are gonna show up on the cart page. And then you can go to checkout. And here is where you can edit all of your information for your checkout page. So you can make certain that certain fields are gonna be required like the phone field and the address field for number two, things like that. But it's pretty much basically set up as a ready to go system. So you really don't need to mess with these too much. And then you've got your privacy policy and terms and condition, uh, which you'd have to actually make those pages. So there is a default privacy policy page with nothing on it. But again, you could go in and create a terms and conditions page, which I can show you how to do by creating a new page. So what we're gonna do is just go up to the X, and then we're gonna go over to the dashboard. And then we're just going to go down to pages and then go to add new. And then you would just call this terms and conditions. And then you would write all of your terms and conditions in here and it works just like a Word document. And then once you're done with that, you can change this. So the URL slug will just do terms conditions like that with just one dash and then click on publish and then publish again. Cool. 
So now we'll just go back over to WordPress to view the pages. And then we are just going to go over to Visit Store. And then we're just going to go back up here and go to Customize again. And then we're just going to go back to WooCommerce. And then back to Checkout. And then we'll set our Terms and Condition page right here. So we'll go to Terms and Conditions. And then that will set that page in there for us. And then let's just go up and click on Publish. And now I'll show you how to edit this logo up here and the menu and really get your header together. So in order to edit this logo, you can just click on the little pencil icon. And that's going to take you to where this default logo is, which we are going to remove and put in our new one. So if you do want to create a logo, you can just go up to a new tab and type in logomaker.com. And this is a completely free software and it's super easy to make a logo with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of this. And you can just search for graphics up here. So if we just type in this little field here, we'll do maybe a shopping bag. Then you've just got thousands of images that you can scroll through and you can honestly just scroll endlessly. There are so many of these things in here. You will pretty much never run out. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one. And then you can just click and drag to move it over. And then you can just drag up on the corner and you can increase the size like that. So I'll just put that over there. And then you can also change the color over here. So you can just drag in this wheel and select a different color. And then you can also select the amount of saturation in that color that you want. So I'll maybe do somewhat of a dark blue, maybe something like that. And then we can add text. So then you just click on this little T to add text. And then I'll just type my shop like that. And you can select different fonts up here. So you've got font categories, which are different categories. You can do scary and dark, fun and funky, handwriting, all sorts of stuff. And then you've got the actual font family up here. And you can select any one of these fonts that you want. So I'll just select any random one like this. And I will click and drag up to make that bigger. And then I'll just drag that right next to my logo. I'll maybe make my logo just a bit smaller. Something like that. And then I want this to be the same color as that logo. So I'm going to select the text, grab this little eyedropper tool, and then I'm going to touch that, and it's going to be the same color. And then once you're all done, all you have to do is just click on the Save Logo button. And it's going to ask you to buy it, but you can also just do, no thanks, download the low resolution file, which is plenty high res enough for what we're doing here with our website. So I'm just going to click on that and get that free logo. And then we're also going to need a site icon. So as you can see, this is a site icon, this L is a site icon, the gator, and so on. These are the little tiny icons that are actually on the browser tab. So to do that, I'm just going to delete my text. And then I'm just going to grab this little symbol and I'm just going to drag it up, make it bigger, just like that. And then again, just go over to Save Logo. And then again, no thanks, download the low resolution file. And cool, so now you can see we've got both of those logos here in our downloads. So let's go ahead and put those in, which I also have these already in the images folder. If you go into the link in the description and download those follow along images. So I'm just going to go back here and then I'm going to remove this logo and remove this one and the mobile one. I'm going to remove that as well. And then I'm just going to uncheck different logo for different retina sizes and different logo for mobile devices. We're just going to make this super simple and we're just going to select logo and then go over to upload files, select files. And then I'm just going to go back to my folder where these are kept. And I'm just going to grab the shop logo, click on open. And while I'm here, I'm also going to upload the favicon. So I'm going to go back to upload files 
and then I'm gonna grab the site icon, which is also called a favicon. And then click on open. So I'm just gonna grab the shop, uh, the actual long logo, and click on select. And it's gonna ask you to crop. So what we're gonna do is just drag this over to the side, just like that, and then click on crop image. And boom, there we go, there is our logo. And if you wanna increase the size, you can just grab the logo width over here and drag that up or down. I'm gonna do something like that, which looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna add my site icon up here. So what you can do is just go over to this menu on the left and just scroll all the way to the bottom. Then you'll see select site icon. Let's go ahead and select one. We'll just grab our shopping bag and then click on select. And we'll just crop it. We'll just grab the top half of the bag and you can kind of see over here on the right what that's gonna look like. So I'll just grab that top half. Ideally you want it to be a perfect square, which you can crop in Logo Maker. If you just go over to Logo Maker and then you type on the little crop symbol down here, sorry, click on the little crop symbol, and then you can just click and drag. And you want to get a perfect square. So these little values that are changing at the bottom right, you just want it to be as close to a perfect square as possible. Maybe something like I don't know, around there, it's pretty close. And then you can just drag it like that and then just double click to crop. And then you can save that out. But for this case, I am just going to stick with the one that I got, click crop image. And then you can see we've now got our little site icon right up there. So I'll just click on publish. And now I'll show you how to edit the home page, and we'll use the drag and drop software for that. So let's just go ahead and click on the X and then we'll just go over to home. And then we're just gonna click on edit with Elementor. Cool, so here we are inside of Elementor. And Elementor is an awesome drag and drop software where you can just drag widgets in from this sidebar over here anywhere on your website. So let's say I wanted to add an image over here. I would just click and drag and I could drop that image in right here and then I could just choose an image in this box and it would show up in here, which is really cool. And if you wanna undo anything, you can just hit Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. So if I wanna change this text, I can just hover over it and then I can just triple click and then I can just type right on the screen if I want to. something like that. And if you wanna change the style of this text, you can just go over to the Style tab, and you can select the text color here if you want. So I can select some sort of crazy color, but I really recommend sticking with either a black or white. I think white looks really good on this background, so I'm gonna leave that. You can change the font by going to Typography, and you can select the font family here. And there's all sorts of Google fonts in here but I'm gonna leave it as the default. You can change the size of that font here, the weight, line height, letter spacing, all sorts of fun stuff here in this menu. And you can also add a shadow if you want to as well. And if you wanna change a button, if you wanna change any widget actually, all you have to do is just go to the widget and hit the little pencil icon next to it. And that's gonna pull that up here in the left sidebar over here. So I could edit where this button's going. So I would just delete the hashtag and enter in my own URL if I wanted to, which could go to my shop page. So I could do HTTPS, create a pro website shop.com slash store. And then that would take them to my store. And you can change the button text right here. This one says shop now, but I'm actually just going to leave it as shop now. And then you can also add an icon to that button. So if I wanted, I could just go to icon library. And let's say I wanted to grab a shopping icon of some sort, I would type in shop. I could really just choose this little bag here if I wanted and click on insert. And that's gonna add that icon in there, which I don't really like the look of, so I'm just gonna delete it. And you can change the button style by going to the style tab and we can just go to normal. So you've got normal and hover, and you can change them both. So normal is just the way it looks without hovering over it, and then hover, 
it kind of changes black, so we kind of want to fix that. So I'm going to leave the button as white. So if you wanted, you could just go to background color. We'll just change that to white. And then if we go to hover, then we go to background color. We can change that to, let's say, like a grayish color. So when we hover over, it kind of turns gray. We'll do a little bit darker. Something like that looks pretty good. And you can do the same with the text color as well. And you can also do a hover animation. So I could just click on that and do grow. And whenever I hover over it, it kind of grows a little bit, which looks pretty cool. So I think I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to go to update to save my work. And if you want to change the background, all you have to do is just go to these six dots for this section. So here you've got a full section, which is in blue. You can see the blue box that runs all the way around. And then you've got columns inside of that, which are these gray ones. These little gray symbols up here, these are columns. And then you've got widgets, which are again in blue with the little pencil icon. And these are inside of columns. So we've got two columns here. And we've got all of our widgets in one. That way we leave a little bit of extra room for her face over here. So if we want to change the background, we can just go to the six dots and click on that. And then we would just go over to style. And then you'll see background, and then you'll see the image right here. And you can just choose a new image if you want to. So I'm just going to choose a new image. And then go to upload files, select files. And then I'm just going to go to where my images are and select the background image, click on open, and then just click on insert media. And there we go, there's our new background image, which is pretty cool, it's got that same parallax effect. And you can change that if you want, if you just go to attachment, you can change that to scroll, and that will kind of move with the rest of the website if you want. But I kind of like the parallax effect, so I'm gonna leave that. And then just click on update to save our work. And you can change any widget on your site by simply just clicking on the little pencil icon and you can edit all of them. You can edit all of these sections here, which is pretty cool. And then the featured products, I'm going to show you how to set that up in just a bit. Okay, so with all this said, let's go ahead and click on the little hamburger looking symbol up here and exit to dashboard. And then we're just going to go back up to the WordPress symbol and click on that. And we'll just get rid of these pages as well. And we also want to add that logo to our home page as well as set up our menu. So if I just go up here to my website and click on visit site, you can see that we've now got that old logo here and we've got our menu right here. And maybe you want to add different items to this menu. So you maybe want to add different product categories or maybe shop men, shop women, whatever it might be. So let's just go ahead and click on customize. And first we're gonna replace that logo. So let's just click on the little pencil icon next to the logo. And then we are just going to change this image right here. And the reason is because this is a transparent header and the other one was not. And it's gonna be a little different from the store to the home page. So we're just gonna grab that logo again, click on choose image. And we're just going to uncheck different logo for Retina devices to get rid of that one. Just like that. So now we've got our logo up there. And you can also adjust the size here if you want to. Just like that. And now let's edit our menu. So you can just go over here and click on the little pencil icon for the menu. And you can see that we've got our WooCommerce menu here, which we want to leave it as that. So we're just going to go back and then back one more time and go down to menus. And then you can see we've got main menu. And then here you can see all of the items in your menu. And if you want to add items to this, you can just click on the add items button. And automatically the pages section is open. So you've got all your different pages here on your website. But we've also got custom links, posts, products, product categories, tags, all sorts of things. So let's say that you wanted to add some product categories up there, like maybe t-shirts or hats. Then we'll just open that up, and we could just click on tees and add that. We'll maybe do services as well, and we'll do hats. I'm just going to add a few random ones to kind of show you how this works. 
now you can see they've been added up here. And you can reorder these in any way that you want. So let's say that I wanted to put maybe store up at the top, the very front. You can see that store is now added to the front of that menu. And let's say that you also wanted to add long sleeves. I'll show you how to make a drop down menu. So what we can do is just close this little add items button. So we get a clearer picture of our website. And if you wanted to add long sleeves underneath tees, what you can do is just grab long sleeves, bring it up underneath tees, and then move it to the right just a little bit to create this little stair stepper effect. And then now, whenever you go to tees, it will show up as a little drop down menu, which is pretty cool. And you can do that for all sorts of product categories. So I'm actually going to grab a count. I'm going to put that at the bottom so that it's right next to the cart, just like that. And I'm also going to grab contact us and put that just above account. So that's also at the end of the menu. And then I might just remove a few things. I might remove about, let's see, just open that up and then just go to remove. That'll shorten up our menu a little bit. So I kind of like everything that's in this menu now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. So I'm just going to click on publish. And then we can also edit the footer all the way at the bottom. So I will show you how to do that. So let's just go back up. And then we're just going to click on the X. And then we're just going to go up to Edit with Elementor and then click on Footer. Cool. So here you can see your entire footer right here. So you can just click on any one of these widgets. Let's say you wanted to edit the quick links in here. You can just click on this widget. And then you can see you've got all of the items right here. So let's say that I wanted to remove home and about. We'll just click on the X for both of those. And let's add maybe like the privacy policy and terms and condition pages. So I'll just click on add item. And then we are just going to call this privacy policy. Just like that. And we're going to remove the little check mark just like that. And then you would just paste in the link to your privacy policy page right here which I don't really know what that URL is right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it blank. And then I'm just going to duplicate this by clicking on this little button here. And then open this one up, and I'll call it Terms and Conditions. Just like that. And then I'll just close that. So now we've got both of those added to our quick links. And same with these. You can edit all of these if you want. You can change the text by simply clicking on it. And you can edit the text right here, or you can just triple click and edit right on the screen. And then same with these buttons over here. You can edit these as well by simply clicking on the little pencil icon. And then as well as your little copyright down here, it should be automatic based on your website. But if you want to change that up, you can as well. So that is how to edit the footer. And whatever you update on here is going to update on your actual homepage. So let's just go ahead and click on update. And then we're going to click on the little hamburger symbol and exit to dashboard. Okay, so now we can move on to step number 16, which is to set up payment methods. Obviously, you want to be able to have customers pay you through your e-commerce store. So let's go ahead and set that up. So what we're going to be needing for that, I'm going to show you how to set up Stripe so that you can have people pay by credit card. And then I'll also show you how to set up PayPal as well. So what we're going to do is just go on over to plugins and we're going to go to add new. And then we're just going to go to the search bar and type in Stripe. And then you'll see WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. So we're just going to install that. And then activate. And then we're just going to scroll down all the way to that plugin. There it is, WooCommerce Stripe Gateway. So we're going to click on Settings. So first, you can see up at the top, we've got this little notification up here that says that we need to sign up for a Stripe account. So let's just go ahead and open that up in a new tab. And I'm just going to put in an email.
full name. And then a password. And then a password again. And then create account. And first we're going to verify our email. So we're going to go over here and expand that. And we're just going to go check in our Gmail and make sure that we get a verification email. So I'm just going to go up to my Gmail. Cool. And now you can see that we have a new email from Stripe. So I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to click on verify email address. Cool. So now you can see that our email is verified. So we can go ahead and close out of this other window and just stay here. And we're also going to get our test API keys. So let's just open that up. And here you can see that we've got our API key right here, which we're going to end up coming back to. So now let's go over to activate your Stripe account. And we'll just click on start now. So I'm just going to fill in my details. And then I'm going to click on next. And then I'm going to fill out my legal name. And then click on next. And then select an industry. So I'm going to search for. So they don't have e commerce. So we're just going to scroll down and we're just going to do digital products. And we will just say other digital goods. Business website. We're going to grab that and put that in. So we'll just do HTTPS. Create a pro website shop.com, just like that. And then product description, we'll just say we sell premium clothing for techies and web designers, something like that. And then next. And then we're just going to say how long that they'll typically receive their goods, which will depend on shipping, which I will end up covering. So we're just going to say within two weeks. And then it's going to ask you to create a statement descriptor. So this is what's actually going to show up on their credit card statements. So it'll just say createaprowebsiteshop.com. And then for the shortened one, we'll just say something like create a pro website shop, like that. Then we've got our phone number and address, so then we'll just say next. And then here is where you put in your bank routing number and account number. And then click next. And then it's going to ask us to verify this, so we're just going to use, use uh, SMS, which is going to be a telephone number. So I'll just put in my telephone number. And then confirm phone number. And then you're going to get a text message. So you just want to put in the code that they give you in that text message. And then it's going to give you this little emergency backup code. So what you're going to want to do is just copy this and save it somewhere safe on your computer. And then just click on Next. And then you just have to verify all of your details and then click on Done. Cool, so now you can see that they just have to review your account. They're going to go over all your details, make sure everything is looking good, which they're doing right now. And they will send you an email whenever your account is actually active. And they may end up asking for proof of ID or some sort of bank statement that has your full name on it, which you may or may not have to do depending on the country that you live in. But while this is being reviewed, we can get our API keys and actually get it working on our WordPress site. So to do that, we'll just go over to Developers. And then we're going to go down to API Keys. And then you can see we've got a publishable key right here. But what we're first going to do is just check on the view test data. And then we're just going to grab this little API key here by just clicking, and it will automatically copy it. And then we'll just go back over to WordPress. And we're just going to come down. And we're going to enable Stripe. And then we'll just get rid of Stripe here so that all the customer sees is pay by credit card. And then in the description, they can see pay with your credit card via Stripe. And then just come down. 
We've got enable test mode on, so we'll just put in that publishable key. And then we need the test secret key. So we'll just go back up to Stripe, and then we will reveal the test key token right here. And we will just copy that, and then go back over to WordPress and put that in. And then we need the webhook secret. So we're going to go back over to Stripe, and then you'll see webhooks right here. We'll just click on that. And then we're going to add an endpoint right here. And then for the endpoint URL, all we have to do is just go back over to WordPress. And you can see that we've got that right here. So I'm just going to copy that. And then go back over to Stripe. We're just going to put that in. And let's actually delete that first bit right there. So now we've got that in there. The description's optional. And for events to send, we're just going to go down to charge because we want to charge people through our website like that. And then click add endpoint. And then from here, we're just going to click to reveal the signing secret. And then we're just going to copy that, bring that over to WordPress. And then we're just going to paste that in right here. And then we can come down and we can add a statement descriptor. Again, kind of the same thing that we did on Stripe. So I'll just say create a pro website shop, something like that. And then we want to leave this checked um, for Apple Pay, Chrome payment, all that kind of stuff. We're going to leave that one checked. All the rest of these settings we can leave checked and just click on Save Changes. And all of that was so that we could test out our payments on our website. And there's one last thing that we need to do. So we'll go over to WooCommerce and we're just going to go to Settings. Actually, we're already on it. So let's just go on over to Payments again and click on that tab. And now you can see that we've got a list of everything that we can do. So we've got Stripe by credit card, which is automatically selected, which is awesome. And we're also going to check PayPal. And then we can just go over to the Setup button right here. And then we'll just scroll down. And you've got a description right here that says Pay via PayPal. And we'll just leave that just the way it is. Pay via PayPal, just like that. And then we'll just scroll down. And you're just going to want to make sure that your PayPal email is put in here. And if you don't have one, you can just go up to a new browser and go to PayPal.com and you can set up an account there. And if this is going to be your business, then I recommend creating a business account. But I don't want to go through the crazy process of doing that. It's pretty easy to walk through. PayPal will walk you through the whole thing. They'll ask you to put in all of your details. And then you can just put in your PayPal email here. So whenever you do that, let's just go down to Save Changes. And now we can go test out payments on our site. So let's just go up to our store. And we'll just open that up in a new tab. And we've already got products in our store. So we'll just go to the cart. Or sorry, we've got products in our cart already. So now we'll just scroll down. And we'll go to proceed to checkout. Cool. And then now you can see that we have got all of the payment options here. We've got PayPal and a credit card. So I will show you uh, the credit card option. So what I'll do is make sure that all my details are in here. So you'll want to put in your details for wherever you live, which mine are blurred out for obvious reasons. And then we will just go down and we're in test mode right now, which is what we have enabled on Stripe. So we have enabled the test data on here. So we'll just go in Oops, over to here. And it's just going to say you can use this credit card number to do that. So we will just copy that. And we'll just put that in here. And we'll just say any valid expiration date. So we'll just say something like 10, 20, something like that. And then we'll do 123 as the CVC. 
and then we'll just go down and agree and then place the order awesome your order has been received so it is now working so people can pay by credit card on your website and I'll go back and show you that you can also do the PayPal so we will just go over to get some products So we'll just go over to long sleeves And we're just going to add this to the cart. So I'll just say I want a medium in the blue. And I'll just add that to the cart. And then we'll go over to our cart. And then we're going to go down to proceed to checkout. And then again, you can fill in all of your information. And we will pay by PayPal. We'll just agree and then proceed to PayPal. And then it will ask you to sign in to PayPal, which once you're actually on this page with PayPal.com, that does mean that it is working. So you are now outside of your uh, WordPress website and then everything will be done via PayPal. So I'm not actually going to log in and pay myself and then have to refund myself, but you get the general idea. PayPal is now working. Okay, so now that that is actually working, we can actually go turn off our testing data. So we don't actually want our checkout page to test anymore. We want for people to actually put in their real credit card information. So what we're going to do is go back over to Stripe, and then we're going to go over to API keys, and we're just going to turn off viewing test data. And then we can go back to WordPress. And then whenever somebody actually puts in an order and places that order and pays, you're going to get an email notification and if you go over to the email tabs here this is where you can actually manage all of the emails that you're getting for your site so new orders canceled orders failed orders all that kind of stuff so all these default settings are going to work perfectly fine for your store but if you do want to edit them you can put in your emails here so you can see what's going to you as the store owner and then what's going to the actual customer over here. Okay, so let's move on to step number 17, which is to create coupon codes. So coupon codes are awesome because you can run sales with them. You can do 20% off or $20 off of any order that's $100 or more, something like that. Or you can send them to friends to get your, your store started. So let me show you how to do that. Let's just go on over to coupons. And then we're just going to click on the add coupon button right here. And then we'll just scroll down and we can create that coupon code. So let's just call this 20%, something like that. And then you can describe it here. Get 20% off any order. And then if we scroll down, you'll see discount type. So we've got fixed cart discount. We've got percentage discount and fixed product discount. So you can do specific products. So we want to do a percentage discount because this is going to be 20%. And then in the coupon amount, we'll just put 20 like that. And then if you want to grant free shipping with that, you can also check this box if you want to. But for now, I'm going to leave that off. And then you can set an expiration date on this coupon. So I'll say that maybe this ends, uh, I don't know, at the end of the month. I'll say the 31st, just like that. And then we'll go into usage restriction and scroll down. And we're going to want to make sure that we check that this coupon cannot be used in conjunction with other coupons. So they can't stack coupons because then people are going to find tons of coupon codes that they can use on your website and just end up getting free product. So we're just going to check that this one can only be used individually. And then you can set a minimum and maximum spend limit for how this coupon code can be used. So let's say that we want to put in a minimum of $20, and then that way, anything that's below $20, they won't be able to use the 20% discount. And then the maximum spend, we could say something like $200. That way, if they go over $200, they can't use the 20% as well. So you can set limits on this stuff. And then the exclude sale items, you can exclude this to items that are on sale. That way, they can only use it on products that are actually full price. So we can check that box. 
And then you can also set this for certain products. So you can just do a specific product, like if I wanted to do the long sleeve, then you can just select the long sleeve T there. And then it can only work on that one product. Or you can do all of them by removing that. And then you can just exclude certain products. So maybe there are some really high price products that you don't want it to be on. You can put those in here. And then you can also go by product categories and you can also exclude certain categories as well. So now let's go over to usage limits. And then you've got the usage limit per coupon. So this is basically how many times you want this coupon to be able to be used. You can say unlimited if you want, or you can set a limit. Let's say I want it to only be used 50 times. And then you've got the usage unit ah, limit usage to X items. And you can say that maybe you only want this to be used on the first five items that are in the cart, and then anything else after that it's not going to apply, but I'm just gonna leave that as no limit. And then the usage limit per customer, you can say maybe I only want one customer to use it one time, just like that. And then that way, we've got a whole coupon code set up for 20%, so if we just go over to publish, cool, that coupon was updated. So now we can go over to our shop, let's just go to visit store. And we'll just add a couple more things into our uh, cart. So I'm just gonna add a couple of these laptop skins just to kind of get our price going up a little bit higher. And then now let's go over to our cart. And then if we scroll down, we can put in that coupon code right here. So I'll do 20% and then apply coupon. Coupon code was applied successfully and you can see it right there. It removed 20% of our total, so we went from 54 down to 43, which is pretty cool. So now I'll show you how to create a free shipping coupon. So if I go back to WordPress, we can add a coupon, and then we'll just scroll down, and we will call this free shipping, like that. Or you can do all capital if you want. That's what a lot of people do for coupon codes, free shipping. And then you can describe this will give you free shipping on any order, like that. And then we're gonna go down and we're gonna leave this as fixed cart discount. And then we're gonna also leave this as zero because we're not gonna actually apply a value to it. So then what we're gonna do is check this box for allow free shipping. And then you can also put in a uh, expiry date on here if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it the way that it is. And we'll go over to usage restriction. And you can put a limit on where you want your free shipping, which I showed you how to do all this already on the last coupon code. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this blank and go over to usage limits. And then also I'm going to go to usage limit per coupon. And we could say I only want free shipping to be used you know, maybe a hundred times. Or we can just do unlimited. And then usage limit per customer, we'll just say one time per customer. And we're actually gonna go back to usage restriction and scroll down. And then you can also exclude this on sale items as well if you want to. I would say just leave it. But we are gonna check that this can only be used by itself. It can't be used with other coupons. They can only have free shipping or only 20%. We don't want them to stack on top of each other. So we'll make sure that that's checked and we'll click on publish. Awesome, so now that free shipping coupon was created. So let's go back over to our cart and we are just going to update this. And we've still got our 20%, so we're just gonna click on remove. And then we can just type in free shipping and click on apply coupon. Awesome, now it said free shipping coupon right there. And that was added, so that's now working. And now I'll show you how to create a coupon for a fixed amount off. Maybe you wanna do $20 off instead of 20%. So what I'm gonna do is just go back over to WordPress and I'm going to add a new coupon. And we're just gonna scroll down and we'll call this $20 off, like that. 
and you can say this will get you twenty dollars off any order and we'll say actually of a hundred dollars or more like that so we're gonna set a limit on this one so we'll just go down and make sure that this discount type says fixed cart discount and then we're just going to say 20 in the coupon amount and then we can put an expiration date on it so I'll just say till the 31st and then we'll go over to usage restriction and for the minimum spend we'll put in a hundred dollars because that's what we want hundred dollars or more so we won't put in a maximum and we want this to be used individually not in conjunction with other coupons and then if you want to exclude sale items you can so I can just click on that and exclude those items and again you can do this for certain products if you want to and then for usage limits we'll just say that this one can only be used 50 times and we only want it to be used once per, per user or per customer which just changed let's do that again there we go and then just go over to publish cool so now that coupon code was created so we'll just go back over to our cart and we're going to remove the free shipping and then now we can apply that new coupon so let's actually refresh this just in case and then now we'll apply twenty dollars off apply coupon and it's gonna say that this is not gonna work because the minimum spend is a hundred dollars so you can see that they'll get this little red notification up here which is pretty cool so let's go ahead and add some more stuff to our cart so we'll just go over to our store or actually we can just go back and let's actually just increase the values here so we'll say like ten of these we'll do eight of these five of these and five of those and then update the cart and now we're up to four hundred dollars so now we can do twenty dollars off and then apply the coupon and you can see that we just got twenty dollars off so it went from four hundred down to three eighty seven and now we can move on to step number 18 which is to set up your shipping so we want to be able to make sure that we're actually charging people for shipping especially if you're shipping across the country so let's go ahead and set that up so we're just gonna go back over to WordPress and then we're gonna go down to WooCommerce and we're gonna to go to settings and then we'll just click on the shipping tab and then just scroll down and we're going to add a shipping zone and then just scroll down again and in here we're just gonna call this United States and then zone regions we're gonna search for United States like that so anywhere shipping in the United States is going to be a specific amount and you can do specific states if you want to but I'm gonna leave that up to you I'm just gonna show you the basic way to do it by shipping to all of the United States and you can do any country of where you're actually shipping your products to and remember we are shipping to all countries we set that up earlier you might only be shipping to specific countries so you're gonna to want to set specific zones for each country so with that put in we're going to save our changes and we're going to add a shipping method and we want this to be a flat rate so you've got flat rate free shipping and local pickup I will show you how to do flat rate and free shipping because local pickup is pretty self-explanatory they come to your actual shop address and pick it up but if you're selling from inside your bedroom you're gonna to need to ship product so we're gonna do a flat rate and we're going to add shipping method and then we're just gonna go over here and we're going to edit that flat rate and we want to make sure it says flat rate do we want this to be taxable or not let's say no we don't want this to be taxable and then we're gonna put in the cost so how much is shipping gonna cost let's just say ten dollars for anywhere in the United States and then we will just save changes 
And then we can also put in our free shipping. So let's just add another shipping method. And we'll just go here and change it to free shipping. And then add the shipping method. And we'll just go in and edit free shipping. And we're going to say this is free shipping as the title. And free shipping requires, and we're going to say a minimum order amount. You could do any one of these if you want. You could say a minimum order or a coupon or a minimum order amount and a coupon. But we're just going to do a minimum order amount. And we're going to say what that amount is. So I'm going to say $100. They have to spend $100 to get free shipping. So then coupon discounts, it's going to say apply minimum order rule before coupon discount. That means that they'll be able to stack a coupon on top of this. So if they want to apply $20 off and their value drops from $100 to 80, this means that they'll uh, still actually, or that they won't actually get free shipping, sorry. So if you click it, then that means that even if it drops below 80, they'll still actually get the free shipping even though their order wasn't fully $100. So we want to make sure that that is unchecked. We want that rule to be applied after the discount, not before it. And then just click on Save Changes. Cool. So now we will just go over to our store and test that out. So I'm just going to remove this $20 coupon. And now you can see that the free shipping is offered. So we've got $400, which is over the minimum limit of $100. So then they can just check free shipping. And then if I were to actually take all these out, so let's say that I have zero of this, or we can just hit the X. And we'll hit the X on this. And one more. Cool. So now we are down to $54, and you can see that we no longer have the free shipping option. It is a standard flat rate of $10. All right, so step number 19 is to manage orders. So whenever a customer were to place an order, they'd actually get an email automatically. So I bought something earlier underneath this exact same email. So I got a order, so you can see new order, number 1522. And it's got a summary of my order here, paid by credit card, and then the address at the bottom. And this is saying that we've received the following order. So as an admin for your store, you can actually manage that. So whenever we go over to WooCommerce, and we just go over to orders, you can see we've got a little one here. And we just scroll down, you can see that an order was placed. Then you can also see pending payments. So that was earlier, I never actually bought anything. I think that was whenever we did PayPal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one. So I'll do bulk actions, move to trash, and apply that. And then we have our processing order. So this was that big one of $184, and it says processing. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on that. And if you are shipping your own product or you're sending it to a shipping office like UPS or USPS or anything like that, what you can do is ship that out to the customer and then you can change the status here. So we'll go to status and we can change it to completed, meaning that their product is on the way. And then you can just update it. And then whenever you update it, it's gonna send an email to the customer to update them as well that their order is finished processing and it's now completed. So we can go over here and we've got this order is now complete email and open it up and you can see we have finished processing your order, which is pretty cool. And you, as the site owner, can manage all of your sales via credit card in Stripe. So if you go back over to Stripe, obviously we used a test payment earlier, so there's going to be $0 showing up in our account right now. But if somebody actually used their real credit card, you would see the amount in here, and it may need a few minutes to update. But you can manage all of your profit here within Stripe. All right, so now we can move on to step number 20, which is to add products to your homepage. So currently, if we actually went over to our home page, let's just go up here and visit the site. And we'll actually close out of these other windows. And we scroll down, our featured products area is empty. And I also want to show you how to add products to this featured products area, as well as add another section that would say something like latest products, or maybe you could do sale products. 
It's all going to be your choice, but I'll show you how to add the products to your home page. And to do that, we're going to need a specific plugin that works with Elementor. It's kind of a sister plugin to Elementor. So let's go ahead and get that. So let's just go back to our WordPress dashboard. And then we're just going to go down to plugins and go to add new. And then we're going to go over here to search plugins and we're going to type in essential add-ons. And you can see essential add-ons for Elementor right here. It's got 700,000 active installations and five stars. I've used this plugin so many times, it's awesome. So I'm gonna install it and then activate it. And this is gonna give us a lot of cool extra tools to use with our Elementor page builder. And if we wanna add featured products to that home page, we need to mark a few products as featured. So let's just go on over to products and go to all products. And then just scroll down and here's all of our products. And to mark a product as featured, all you have to do is just click on one of these stars. So I'm just going to mark a few. We'll say the hat is going to be marked as featured. It'll need a second to update. We'll say that the long sleeve is also going to be featured. And we'll come down here and do maybe the coaching and the ebook as well. And then just the ebook. Awesome. So now we've got a few products marked as featured. And actually, I'm going to feature one more. Let's say that we want to feature the laptop skin as well. I think that's a pretty cool looking product. All right, so now that we've got all five of those products featured, then we can just visit our site and scroll down. And now you can see that we've got all of our featured products here now. And I'll show you how to duplicate this and create a latest product section. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just click on Edit with Elementor. So we'll just scroll down. And here again, we've got our featured products here. So we're going to actually duplicate this. So let's actually duplicate the title because we're going to create a whole other section. We're actually going to do on sale products or just sale products. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this heading and we will just type right there on the screen, sale products, or maybe we'll just do on sale like that. We're also going to duplicate this little divider, make sure everything looks nice and just drag it up underneath on sale. And then we're also gonna take this widget where our featured products are, and we're going to duplicate that. So just added a second one underneath. And let's actually just drag this one underneath on sale. There we go. And then we can edit the short code over here. So right now it just says featured products and then it has the columns and the limit on products. So we're actually just gonna take featured and we're gonna change that to sale, like that. And then that's just gonna show our on sale products like that. So we can just click on apply and we'll just scroll back down. So now you can see we've got our on sale products and I've only got four on sale right now. I actually went back in and made a few on sale so you could kind of see more of a list but obviously with more product, you're gonna have a lot more here. You might end up having eight by the time you actually add all your products, and then same with featured products. But now there's actually products on your store so that people can just go click on them and it will take them right to that product. So we're gonna go ahead and hit update. And then we are going to hit the eyeball to preview our changes, and we can look at our full website now. So here we go, here's our website. Everything's looking good. We've got our on sale products, our featured products. We've got our footer at the bottom. We've got our menu at the top, which we've got our little drop downs in here. There we go. And you can see we're now in our shop. And if we go back to home, we can go down and click on a product. 
and it's going to take us to that product. We can add it to the cart just like this. And then we've got our little cart page over here that's set up with our payments and everything. We've got our coupon codes that we created. You've now got everything that you need to run a profitable store. All right, guys, so congratulations for making it all the way to the end. That was a full walkthrough of WooCommerce and how to create an online store. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to hit that like button or subscribe to my channel for more. I'm always putting out new website tutorials, helpful explanation videos, and even videos about how to make money with websites. And feel free to check out our Instagram and TikTok for web design inspiration, quick how-tos, and even behind the scenes. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dale from Creator Pro Website, and I will see you on the next video.